Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. It is my absolute pleasure to have Tony Ortega back on the show. It's been a long time. This is going to be for a bonus episode. This is the Back by Popular Demand series of the show. And, you know, I know that people who do the work that you do uh, sometimes find it to be a thankless job. And ultimately, you're not doing it for thanks anyway. But still, sometimes your life is is made more whole by it because people really appreciate the work. And sometimes your life is made more difficult by it. But regardless, I think in order for you to continue doing what you're doing, you're saying, I can't, I can't sort of listen to the noise. I have to be very focused on why I'm doing this, why this matters to me and that it's beyond me. It's not just for me. It's for all these other people. And, and also just for getting information out there. So if we can start, if just in case people didn't hear the first episode and want to know about what you're doing, if you can describe that, and then I'd love for you to update me on, on some of the latest that you have been tapping into. Well, thank you, Rachel. Years ago, I set myself this strange goal of every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, trying to put something on my website that my readers, who include longtime former Scientologists and real experts in the field, bring them something every morning at 7 a.m. that they have not seen. I mean, it's a very simple goal, but it's actually very challenging because this is a very knowledgeable group of folks. So it can be breaking news, it can be court news, or we could be looking in the past and getting a new perspective on something that happened in Scientology's past. But a lot of times Scientologists ask me, why, why are you so interested? You were never in. And that kind of puzzles them. But, you know, I'm a journalist. I, I, I think Scientology is a fascinating story. And, and, you know, I think that Scientology has this amazing ability to kind of use America's most cherished freedoms against it, against Americans in ways that are really bizarre and that they seem to get away with and that the courts and law enforcement can't are too flustered to do anything about. To me, that's a fascinating ongoing story. And that's, that's simply what fuels me is I want to see where this story goes. And along the way, I've met a lot of people and learned their stories. Uh, as I have written about people, I learned their disconnection stories. When Scientology if you leave and speak out, you will lose contact with all of your family and friends. It's a policy in Scientology called disconnection. And so I've learned these heartbreaking stories about parents losing complete contact with their children, children losing contact with their parents, people losing contact with their brothers and sisters. And so I have created a list of some of the people I have spoken to that have gone through that. And you know what inspired me in that, Rachel, was, was Bernie Headley. Bernie was really an amazing guy. And I was just sickened by what he was going through that, you know, he had lost not just Mark, but also a daughter to Scientology. And eventually Mark got back out and was reunited, reunited with his dad, which is a great story. But, you know, Bernie was having health issues. He was battling cancer. He was getting older. And he had told me, he said, I don't know if I'll ever get to see my daughter again. And it was just, it was so needless. He didn't, he wasn't going to try to talk her out of Scientology. He just wanted to see his daughter again before he died. And I was, I just felt like this is the kind of thing Scientology counts on other publications, either ignoring or not keeping up on. And it just inspired me. I'm going to keep a list. I'm going to keep a list of these people that are going through this that tend to be forgotten and just every day update how many days it's been since they saw their loved one. So I, it's limited to people that I've written about. So I'm not saying that this is a comprehensive list of all the people undergoing disconnection in Scientology, but just the people that I personally know and that I have written about. And every day that list, those days grow and it's just heartbreaking. And then Bernie died. He, he never saw his daughter again before he passed away. So uh, I, I keep him as, at the top of the list. It's dedicated to him. But, you know, people like Christy Colbrand, who's never seen, who hasn't seen her parents, and Claire Headley, who hasn't seen her mother. And, 
you know, it's just heartbreaking to me. And I just wanted to remind people, this is why my website exists. And so, you know, the website itself is so powerful. Not only do you keep people up to date on what's happening in the news and uh, and from different perspectives and different people's perspectives, just as a, a journalist, a true journalist, but there is this, at, at the core of it is this heart. And that's palpable when you go to your website. It is amazing that people are kept from their loved ones. I've heard many stories. I've done counseling with people who said, I've tried everything. I've had to go through the ethics department. I've had to write letters. I've had to appeal. And this is just to have a phone conversation or to have my loved one come to the hospital to visit someone before they die of cancer. And and then it gets vetoed. And then they have to meet with another person and another counsel and you know, jumping through all of these hoops. And people are willing to do it because they feel like that's their only way, but it still doesn't work. And so, you know, I don't know how to tell people to not try what they think is their sort of last ditch effort, but it doesn't get you anywhere. What I've seen is uh, people try a couple of different roads. One is what you're speaking about, where the church puts up a lot of requirements. You have to go through certain procedures to um, get to the point where the church will allow you to see that person. And, and one of the things that they will want you to do is keep quiet. So there are people I know who have been vocal in the past who are now, you don't hear from them. And it's because they're hoping that if they keep out of the press, keep quiet about things, the church will then allow them to see their loved ones. That's one path. And I never criticize somebody for trying that because they're just doing what they can to see their loved one again. But there are other people who have decided to take the noisy way. And both have worked. People have been reunited who kept quiet, and people have been reunited because they get loud. I, there's a one woman I've wanted to write a story about for years, and she won't let me yet. I met her on my book tour years ago, and she wanted me to meet her son because her son was being told to disconnect from her, and her reaction was just to raise holy hell. She just was... She was constantly, you know, calling Scientology and attacking them and saying, I'm going to the FBI, blah, blah. And she she told me, she said, she said, I made myself such a pain in the ass. They finally just said, here, here's your son, take him. And it had worked. And I said, you know, so many families would like to hear that, that this is one possible way. But but she 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 won't let me. But uh, but then other people go the quiet route. And I'm who am I to tell them which way is better? I don't know. I mean, you know, it's so difficult to know what's going to work. And, but the constant in all of this is just how cruel the church of Scientology is. They know what they're doing. They understand that they're manipulating these families into these terrible situations. That's, you know, I hear every once in a while, I hear somebody say, well, haven't you ever cut out somebody from your, you know, some family member you don't like? So that's not the issue. We all have people that we choose to be around or not be around. This is an organization using these kinds of isolation as a political tool. I mean, that's the big difference is this church, this so-called church is forcing parents not to see their children. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, it is insane. Right. And, you know, one of the things that sometimes people will ask me, you know, how do you define a cult and differentiate it from, you know, some organization or, or religion? And one of the things that sort of holds true most of the time is that within a religion, you're with your family, you celebrate holidays with your family, you go to church or whatever it is with your family. And this takes the place of your family and it's more important then and it stands squarely between. And, you know, that's not how a a spiritual organization should work, which just shows how spiritual it is. When you tell these stories and when you help people have a voice it's a very powerful thing. And I know that there have been times over the last few years that we've talked about things that I've gone through and you're like, I'm here as soon as you want (laughs) to tell the story and you have to time it right so that you don't get more ire that you can handle at any one time. But it's wonderful to offer people that forum because I know there are a lot of people I've talked to who have said that it has been very empowering to be able to have their story told on your site and also just to have your backing where they know you're waiting in the wings, you know, just in case whenever they're ready and you, you're going to be there to help empower them to tell their story. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to give people a voice. 
Well, thank you. And I, you know, several times a year, I, I am approached by people that tell me, you know, and I have to explain to them, I'm not a counselor. I can tell your story. I'm a journalist. I'd like to tell your story if you want to, but I can't really, you know, serve the purpose of a counselor. But let me tell you about someone who can. And so I, I, I do my best to send people your way because I know that you understand what they're going through and, and you help them so much. Um, and it's, yeah, it, it's, I know for, for some people, it means a lot to have their story told, to show up on the website. But let me tell you, for every person you've heard of at the Underground Bunker, I speak to so many more people that never go public. They send me information, they send me documents, they give me tips, and, but I never talk about who they are because they're, you know, they they fear Scientology and for good reason. I mean, this is a very vindictive organization. It's one of the most uh, characteristic things about Scientology is they just they enjoy harming people. So I, I, you know, I do talk to a lot of people that you'll never hear about. 